Hello everybody, Tim here and today I want to show you my blueprint asset pack. It's called Surveillance Camera Madness and yeah, I will uh, teach you how to set up uh, your surveillance camera system. So in your content folder uh, click on surveillance camera, blueprints and we start by dragging out a surveillance camera into the scene. Rotate it a little. You will notice the size of the camera is very small. Um, this is because they use a different scale on this example map, but we can scale it up. Okay. You see this preview image on the bottom right. Um, this is for the post-processing effect. So you can easily uh, add post-processing to your surveillance camera. Um, let's say use white balance to make it look a little hotter and uh, you can use bloom you can basically use all supported post-processing effects so uh, now the image looks really hot um, I can duplicate it the basic uh, idea is you have different surveillance cameras, all of them have a unique ID, one, two, and so on. And if we now add a monitor, oh, cool size. The monitor has a camera ID it's linked to. We can show, so, uh, you will notice this green material, um, it's called material slot override. You can easily replace this monitor mesh with other meshes and just type in the material slot you want to override with the camera image. If I hit play now, you see we already have a image from camera one on this monitor. You will see the resolution of the image is not good and it's currently running at 15 frames per second. So you can adjust this in the camera settings. So let's say 30 frames and the resolution 512. I recommend this resolution depends on the size of your monitor on your camera movement. So if you have a fast moving camera or fast rotating, you want to set the frames per second a little higher uh, because it looks uh, better. So now the image is a little clearer and this is basically the easy setup. You can repeat and duplicate this monitor, set it to camera ID 2. And now we can see the comparison. The left one is using the 512 texture. The right one is using the default 265. And yeah, you can see the difference in quality. So, I mean, this low poly monitor isn't the prettiest, right? So let's delete this and um, just replace it with your own mesh. So, um, for example, let's take this. This monitor uses the same material slot. So, uh, if we hit play, yeah, it looks pretty good. Of course, we sometimes have meshes like this one. Oh, what happened there? like uh, this one which has very uh, which has more material slots you want to show your camera image so we have these two monitors one on the left one on the right we could however go to static mesh and um, look what material slots we need to override but we can just trial and error so zero one two this is one monitor and three. Yeah, so if you hit play now, you see the camera is rendered to both material slots. You can, of course, use something like 
one and just <laughs> see how funny it looks. Um, if you use this, uh, you want uh, to have your UVs uh, unwrapped the right way. Now let's go to the camera. You can use your own meshes here too. You can, for example, use this mesh. I have uh, two preview camera meshes and you can adjust the camera mount too. Uh, we have a little offset here. So uh, now the camera works with this uh, different meshes. So let's take a look at the camera rotation and camera settings in general. So if you scroll down, we have the ID, FPS resolution, field of view. We have talked about this. Uh, and the different meshes you can set. Um, okay, now let's talk about the rotation first. There is an is active box. If you make it inactive, the camera won't move at all and uh, don't render scenes. So make sure this is checked. And now we have these two lines. This is, I call them the info lines. So it will tell you uh, between which angles the camera will rotate. So you can easily adjust them with the sliders and you can adjust the rotation speed. Yeah, this is one rotation mode. You also can show perspective info and this is the maximum perspective the camera will uh, look at. So it's pretty good if you have some corridors, you want to make sure the camera sees everything. This depends on the field of view which makes sense. Then we come to the different rotation modes. We have still, which doesn't move the camera at all. We have 360 degrees. I can show you. The camera will rotate 360 degrees. Yeah. And then we have the simple rotate right left. This is what I showed you. And we have the timeline. So, um,. We have two timelines, unbound and bound, so if you use unbound, you make sure that your camera rotation curve is uh, an unbound curve, so this is basically the raw camera degree, okay? So if I hit play now. Ah, and um, if you use timeline, you have this timeline play rate to adjust the speed. The camera is now playing the timeline. And yeah, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with this setting. Maybe we should add a monitor. Timeline bound, it will use this maximum rotation angles and you have to make sure your timeline is like this it goes from 0 to 1 so not it's not really the angle in degrees but um, the ratio between uh, left and right so 1 is for right and minus one is for left i think so um you can use this timeline to rotate the camera between those two info lines yeah ah, and you have the mount offset sorry i forget about that um this is basically the rotation of that 
of the camera. So if you have this camera, let's see, I set up here some hanging on the wall. This doesn't look good, just go with minus 10. And now your camera is facing downwards. So, um, uh, and sorry, you can also use this rotation to make the center of the uh, to rotate the center of the camera. So um, you cannot go between zero with those two values. So if you have a very um, low angle of rotation, you can just turn the camera with this angle instead. Now we come to the monitor settings. So I will just add the monitor here, select this mesh. And yeah, you always have to make sure the monitor is um, green. If you type in an ID that doesn't exist, it will turn to this noisy material. So let's go with camera two, take a look. Yeah, this is quite good. So um, the system is pretty performant, so you can go with all kinds of cameras. Oh, this doesn't exist does exist. Okay, let's go with one. And you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. If you delete a monitor or a camera, you just ignore this message. You can adjust the monitor noise. Let's say it to 20, which is really high and you will notice the image is very noisy you can set it to zero and notice the image is very clear if you want to switch the cameras in your game um, you can call I have some events um, I have a change monitor camera ID event so just call that um, or you can change the monitor view mode. The monitor view mode, you can choose it here. It's by default one camera, so the monitor will only um, show one camera at a time. But um, you can also uh, use switch camera array and uh, by default it um, cycles through this ID cycle array and yeah, basically um, shows all the cameras with the IDs in this array. So this would show camera two, camera three, camera five, and the array cycle time is the time uh, how much seconds each of these cameras shows. So if I hit play now, we should see uh, three different cameras. This is three because it always starts with the first array index then uh, five and the last one should be camera two. Yeah, and basically that's it. Ah, and uh, you can, you notice this monitor overlay. Uh, you can also change this to like this little recording thing here or to this, this looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, so you can add whatever texture you want and this will do it. We have this always render setting. This I will show you. Need to add another camera here. If you set it up like this, you notice the funny monitor inside monitor effect. And um, basically the always rendered button means that the camera image is constantly rendered so if we type always rendered we can go wherever we want and this monitor and camera image will render every time 
it always renders and this can be a huge performance issue. Um, if you uncheck it, I would recommend it. And you go too far away, the image stops and if you go nearer, the image, yeah, renders. Here you can set the distance um, in the blueprint. Yeah, and this is basically why it's called surveillance camera madness.